So cruciate ligaments and cruciate in injuries. The, this is a big one. It's, um, it's, I remember when I first started to practice like long, like long, long time ago uh, in conventional medicine, I, I you know, didn't see it very often. There would be overweight old dogs, big old dogs, you know, Roddy's had a tendency to, to come in that were, you know, 50 pounds overweight and they would, they would blow a cruciate, a cruciate. And, um, but now everything gets it. Skinny dogs, fit dogs, large dogs, small dogs. And in my personal opinion, the majority of these are not injuries. They're called injuries, but the majority of them are immune, autoimmune related. And what winds up happening, I did a, uh, I don't know now, maybe 15, 14 years ago, I did a, a course. I went in to Florida and did a canine rehab program. And there was orthopedic surgeons there, but there was all kinds of different um, uh, professionals. And by the end of the, by the end of the program, everybody was sort of on the same page that when you go in and you look at these ligaments, rarely do we see a true rupture from a perspective of some dog was running, you know, a million miles an hour and fell off a bank or whatever and, and truly tore their, their cruciate. Those are less often seen than ones that when you, even though that's what they look like, they look like an acute injury. You don't even know that, that there's anything wrong with your dog's legs. And all of a sudden you're playing Frisbee or they're in the beach and they come up completely dead lame and, and toe touching or not even being able to put their leg down at all. But when we see a lot of those, when you open up the knee, the, the tendon is actually frayed. So you know that it's been on its way to doing that for quite some time and then it just it just snaps and in that situation the majority of those are immune mediated so autoimmune related um, what we want to do is to we really want to try and prevent these as much as you possibly can and that would be with doing what you would normally do to prevent any autoimmune disease so feeding a species appropriate diet decreasing uh, routine vaccines and flea medications and using natural support whenever possible. So when, if your animal has an injury, you should start with these questions. And one is don't automatically assume that it's a full rupture. You're gonna wanna find out whether it's a full rupture or a partial tear. Because partial tears can actually heal quite well. Um, and I would say that many, many are partial tears, but they look like full ruptures. So your vet will do something called a drawer to see if it has a drawer. So it will have to see whether, whether when you pull the drawer open, whether there's, whether it moves open or not, or whether it stays. And even with, even with pretty um, obvious drawers, they can still be partial tears. Uh, what's your animal's age? So are they even in a, in a, an age or a health section that they could even have an, a, a, a surgery on their, on their leg? And what is your animal's physical health and size? So is it a really big dog that's overweight and has Cushing disease or has thyroid disease or has a whole bunch of other, like a bunch of arthritis? It's really, really stand back and get all your questions answered and look at this from a high level perspective. <laughs> now, how we can uh, support this when this happens is right away you can give them uh, Arnica 1M and Aconite 1M or, or 200C of each one if you can't get 1M. Um, and you would do it every hour th for three hours. Then when you take them to your vet, you can ask your vet if they would if they're okay with giving you a 72 hour conservative approach that you can then use homeopathic remedies. This is where I would do, introduce a combination of remedies that Adored Beast um, actually uses called jump for joints formula. And that's Arnica, Ruta, Symphytum and Calendula. And typically in these acute cases, you would go very high potencies. It's, it's an interesting little story. Um, at my clinic, I produce jump for joints for torn cruciate ligament, 
ligaments and injured cruciate ligaments. That's, that's how I came up with that formula. And then quite quickly, we were seeing, you know, when I was saying that some animals have, you know, that they'll tear their cruciate, but they've already got arthritis or something. Quite quickly, we were getting feedback with this, with this combination, how much it was helping, helping animals with um, their arthritis. So that's why we created Jump for Joints formula for arthritis or any kind of muscle skeletal injury at all. So once you give these remedies during this 72 hours, you would probably be giving them over the 72 hours, I would say you would be giving it to them every four hours um, over that whole, whole entire 72 hours uh, <clears throat> or four times a day. You can start off, you know, closer together when you're awake and then you can give it just before bed and then obviously wait that eight hours until the morning unless your dog's waking up whimpering because it's hurting or something then you're getting up to go to the bathroom then you can keep the the routine of giving them um every eight hours or every, four times a day throughout that time if your animal weight bears even if it's toe touching continue giving these remedies until you recheck them with your, until you get into recheck with your vet. So let's say your recheck, because everybody's so busy, your recheck's not for, you know, five days or six days. Then what you can do is instead of giving it so close together, you can give then I would still give it to them three to four times a day until you wind up seeing your veterinarian. So if your animal's geriatric are, comp are compromised and you opt out of surgery, these are the things that you can do. Look for a company that specializes in and is well known for making braces for animals. Uh, in my experience, companies that use a mold, we used to use a company that, that you would get the mold shipped to you and you literally put it on their leg and it would create almost like a cast. And then that cast slips off and then it, we sent, you send the whole cast to the company that actually makes the brace because then it's really specific to your animal. Uh, continue with homeopathic remedies from the prior slide. You can reduce them to twice a day. And then definitely do what we would do because we had all of this thing. It was, we were very lucky at my clinic. Um, but things like laser therapy, swimming, physiotherapy, chiropractics, osteopathy, massage are all valuable in healing. My personal opinion is the brace. Uh, laser is really good for inflammation. But um, rehab swimming is, is phenomenal for, for these dogs because there's no weight, once they can get there, there's no weight on them whatsoever, but you're building, they're not losing their muscle mass by not being able to exercise. Um, chances are that they'll do amazing without needing surgery. If your animal is young and toe touching and you would prefer to avoid or can't, afford surgery, then you do the combination just like the geriatric animal above. So anyone that's going to choose for whatever reason not to go the surgery route, it's the same, it's the same um, protocol for everybody. And, and, I, and I have to say, um, we did a lot of different things. We even did stem cell surgery for cruciate ligaments. But when I say that people are like gas because of the the bad rap that, that stem cells get. But at our clinic, we would never do stem cells until we treated that animal for a year. So even if we were gonna do stem cells, we wouldn't take the stem cells until we made sure that the, the stem cells that we were taking were really, really healthy so that the dog hadn't been vaccinated, wasn't on any drugs, was on a raw food diet, et cetera. But we had not just doing stem cells. I'm not talking about that. We only did a couple of them. But I had, I I have to say, we had at least 75 percent success rate in in um, working with cruciates without doing surgeries. But but I'm not I'm not anti surgery on any means. But if you do do surgery, I'm I I'm I dig my heels in pretty hard here, where I really believe that orthopedic sur surgeons should should really do it. Um, I've seen the vet, I've seen vets with the best intentions and have done pretty done pretty done pretty good, pretty good 
testing some vets that have a knack. I, I used to work with a vet in Vancouver and um, he wasn't an orthopedic surgeon, but he really had a knack and he was great. But on the whole, you, you have to look at it that, you know, how many are they doing compared to an orthopedic surgeon? The, a board certified orthopedic surgeon that's doing them all day long. They're working with bone and surgeries all day long. So I would re really recommend that. Do a ton of research on all the different types of surgeries because there's lots. And when you go to your orthopedic surgeon, make sure you're asking them every single question you can possibly imagine with the different surgeries as far as, you know, um, how long is the dog laid up for? What are the side effects as far as even inflammation of the bone? Um, you know, what are the pros? What are the cons? And then make your decision. Don't let them bully you into a, a certain type of surgery. Make your own decision based on what feels right for you. Ask around. This is a big one too. Ask around to find someone whose animal has already had great success and make an appointment with that surgeon, nothing is better than word of mouth. Someone saying, oh my gosh, yeah, you know what? My dog never looked back. He had this surgery and he just did amazing flying colors right from the get-go compared to, yeah, my dog had it too. And then, you know, we had to keep taking him back in and I'm not even sure if I should have had it because he sometimes limps just as bad, da, 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 da. So even if you choose sur surgery, please continue to use homeopathic remedies and add, add some of the therapies, if not all of them, to the surgery on top other than obviously the brace um, to prevent the same injury from happening from the other leg. Now, this is, this is uh, a scary percentage, but they say that more than 50% of dogs will blow their other leg that's already had one cruciate um, ligament blown. And that screams to me, the autoimmune where, where that leg has is already compromised. The inflammatory response is already there. It's shearing down on the ligament and then all its weight is on that leg until the other leg that was injured heals. So I know more people than not that have had both, had to have both done. Saying that, I would say, 90 percent 80 to 90 percent of the animals that we dealt with that had a cruciate surgery and we treated it with supportive care post-surgery whether it was head surgery at a different clinic and was coming to us as a referral practice um, so that the other leg didn't blow i would say 80 to 90 percent didn't blow their their other leg